Hello, and welcome to today's webinar entitled OLEP and Multidimensional Analysis with Excel and Google BigQuery. I'm Carol Gunst, Marketing Director at AtScale, and I'm told we're in for a great webinar today. All attendees are in listen-only mode. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent to everyone who's registered for it today. The on-demand version will also be published to the AtScale website in our resources section. And if you have any questions, please enter them in the Q&A chat window, and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. Now, let me hand it over to Dave Mariani, co-founder and chief strategy officer of AtScale. Dave? Great, thanks, thanks uh, Carol. So, um, welcome everybody, and uh, today, uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're going to really drill down on just how Excel works with Google BigQuery through um, at scale in, in quite a bit of depth. So uh, stick around. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover a few slides to show you the, the at scale solution for those who are maybe new to it. Um, but uh, there'll be some extensive demos. Um, and, um, and maybe I'll teach you a few tricks when it comes to Excel um, and using live pivot tables. Um, okay, so uh, so let's get going. Uh, so uh, we're just going to cover uh, why OLAP works and is so important um, in a cloud environment. Um, we'll we'll talk about why people still use Excel. Um, if you're on this webinar or viewing this webinar, you probably are a fan. Um, and then I'll show you how we're going to make it work together. Um, and when I do that, I'm going to actually show you it live on some real live data in Google BigQuery. So, uh, so why do we care about OLAP? Well, I always think of OLAP as, as, as delivering on these three capabilities. The first, the first one is what most people think about it, which is query speed. Uh, and query speed, not in, we're not talking 10 seconds, 20 seconds per query, 30 seconds per query. That's not OLAP speed. OLAP speed needs to be one second or less. Um, and that's the, that is what we call speed of thought, which really supports um, a, a kind of exploration, a data exploration where you can really literally do anything by anything. So you're not taking a predefined path. It's your, your path, that random walk through your data is driven by your ability to query and ask questions very, very fast. That's not possible with just SQL on existing cloud tools like BigQuery. Uh, your minimum latency for a BigQuery uh, is, is, is two to three seconds at its best. Um, and, and with most customers doing BI style queries, you're gonna be talking about the, uh, of the, the, the 10 seconds or more per query. And that changes things. The, uh, the other thing that's important about OLAP is that it's a semantic layer. It's measures and dimensions, and everybody, you know, all the BI tools talk about measures and dimensions. So they've really adopted that 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 semantic those semantic uh, terms. Um, but really, what it means is that th that semantic layer is defined in one place and used in many places. So we're not talking about defining a uh, semantic layer in the BI tool like a Tableau or like a Power BI where that semantic layer is only visible and only usable by that BI tool. That's a semantic layer, all right, but it's not a universal semantic layer. A universal semantic layer means the data is gonna be the same, regardless of whether you're viewing it in Tableau, Power BI, or today, Excel. And then finally, there's the expressiveness of OLAP. And when I'm talking about expressiveness, I'm talking about the MDX language, the multiple, uh, the uh, multi-dimensional expression language. Um, and that means that they can do, uh, and we can express things that are really difficult to do in a in a straight SQL. Um, is when, as soon as you have to do a ratio, well, that's a multi-pass query because you have to sum the denominator um, and uh, first before you divide it, divide, divide the numerator. So very simple calculations which are so critical just to expressing uh, the business uh, and, and your, your business language um, is uh, it's impossible to really, it's harder to do in SQL and OLAP makes that work like a spreadsheet, which is very compatible with Excel. So why Excel? Uh, well, first of all, there's 750 million people using it. Uh, Excel is ubiquitous. It is on everybody's desktop. 
Uh, and that means that uh, it's already there and, and your users, if you're an IT, are gonna use it because it's at their fingertips and it's really their default tool for analytics. Yeah, they may have a BI tool as well, but most often what people do is they'll use the BI tool to sort of zero in and they'll end up dumping it in Excel to do their, their last mile analysis. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's an incredibly flexible tool um, and that's the nature of a spreadsheet uh, where you have a uh, cell by cell access. And I'm gonna show you in our demo today how we can take a, a cell in Excel and point it to a cell in BigQuery through at scale. Um, and that's just super powerful because if you can do those cell level kind of calculations, then you can create fantastic forecasting models um, and do crazy modeling things and have that all be refreshable as your data gets refreshed at BigQuery. And you can do that all through Excel. So we see a lot of our customers maybe using a BI tool for uh, dashboards and the like, um, and interactions with those dashboards, but they use Excel to really truly model the business. And with that scale, you can have the best of both worlds, all the while maintaining that semantic consistency, that OLAP speed, and being able to express the business um, definitions uh, easily. So where does that scale fit in the stack? Well, if you look at this stack, this is, this is what I, I see a lot of people doing uh, when they move to the cloud. Uh, they land their data on, on the, the file system of, of the respective cloud. That's the data lake. Uh, they may use an ETL uh, engine or ETL tool to pour that data into a cloud data warehouse. They may actually access that, that data lake straight um, and, and access it in its raw form. And then they plug in their, their, their applications and their, their, their tools uh, to run queries. And they have a data catalog that's managing the assets across this spectrum. Um, what's, what, what most people need and, and what we're and where we fit is in that semantics and, and governance engine. Because if you have that single, that single semantics, uh, semantic layer, that universal semantic layer, it means that all those tools that you use to access your, uh, your data, regardless of whether it's in the lake or whether it's in a cloud data warehouse, are gonna all play by the same rules and be able to be managed by the different catalogs um, um, that you've invested in. So with that scale, we are gonna not only provide you a semantic layer, you have a full-fledged OLAP engine, which means you can do Excel analysis at the speed of thought, using Excel cube value and cube member functions and pivot tables. Um, and you can do all that while, being, uh, while having a central point for uh, enforcing uh, governance and security access. So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a little bit of Tableau just, just, just to show you this, the semantic layer. Um, and Excel, spent a lot of time Excel against BigQuery, against the data that's in the Google Cloud Storage. So um, before we move on, just a little bit about uh, at scale cloud OLAP versus traditional OLAP versus do it, your, do it yourself. So these are sort of the real sort of uh, options, I guess, out there for, uh, for doing cloud-based uh, uh, business intelligence. So with at scale, of course, you're gonna get ad hoc query performance like you would with traditional OLAP. If you're doing it yourself and rolling your own, you're never gonna get that speed. It's just not possible given the cloud data warehouses and the latencies that come with it. Um, if you wanna be able to speak MDX, you can't do that uh, in your, in your, if you're rolling your own. Of course, you can do that with, uh, with OLAP and traditional OLAP because most of those tools speak MDX, which lets you express and define that biz those business uh, rules, but do them without having to try to map them to SQL, which is really hard. Um, you're gonna be able to handle um, and be able to, to deal with and eliminate all that, that extra, um, uh, all that extra work that you have to do to move data around. You're gonna be able to, with that scale, predict that scale, uh, predict uh, your cloud costs, because we're gonna be caching your data um, and preventing multiple re-aggregations of that data for every query. Um, we're going to allow you to, to quickly respond to new requests for new data sets by publishing them virtually versus the traditional model of OLAP where you have to build cubes. 
there is no building cubes um, and, and, and pre-aggregating with that scale. You're gonna be able to support multiple clouds. Uh, and that means that uh, regardless of, of what cloud you choose today, uh, you may choose a different cloud tomorrow or a different tool, a uh, different uh, data warehouse on those, on those clouds. With that scale, we, we future-proof you. Um, and with that, you can uh, make sure that uh, all your investment in, in creating that semantic layer is gonna be preserved if you move to a different architecture in the future. And of course, you wanna be able to use the widest range of tools available, including tools that speak only SQL, like Tableau. But of course, use Excel, which is what this whole webinar is all about. So not only uh, do you get the power of Excel on Google BigQuery, um, we also provide um, many um, uh, query performance um, benefits. We're up to seven and a half, over seven and a half times faster. That's seven orders of magnitude faster using at scale than using BigQuery by itself. Uh, from a concurrency perspective, when you start to get into uh, 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 five, uh, uh, 25, 50 concurrent users, at scale is up to 20 times faster. That's 20 orders of magnitude. And when it comes to reducing cost and spend, we are 10 times cheaper with that scale. All these numbers were uh, computed using a TPC DS 10 terabyte data set. Um, and you can come to our website, you can download the full report to see just, uh, just how everybody performed um, and what, what it can potentially do for you. Okay, enough of the slides. Let's get in and let's actually do some real work here using the at scale tools. So I'm going to switch to my um, at scale design center view here. So this is design center. We call it at scale design center in a web browser. What you see here is what we call our canvas. What you see on the right is our panels. Our panels have a, a there's a preview panel. There's a panel where I have specified my dimensions and my measures. In my preview panel, this is what your BI tool is going to see. This is what you're going to see today in at scale and in Excel and Tableau. So you can see, for example, I have, uh, I have hierarchies, which is all about OLAP, being able to drill down and be able to follow and organize your data in a hierarchy. And of course, I have a set of measures all, all organized um, in folders and, and the like. That's my semantic layer. Over here is I have my raw data. So what I'm going to do, rather than try to explain all this, is I'm going to define an, a brand new virtual cube using at scale. Um, and then I'm gonna explore that virtual cube first in Tableau so you can see how it works in SQL mode, but then spend most of my time in Excel and show you how we can do cell level analysis in Excel so you can build complex forecasting models. Okay, let's go back to my, um, my project view here and I'm gonna create a new cube and I'm gonna call it uh, Excel demo. Uh, let's just do that. So Excel demo is a brand new cube, virtual cube. Um, and I'm going to enter my model and I'm back to my canvas. So here's on my canvas. Um, and what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start painting on that canvas. So I'm going to paint using data. So I'm going to go to my data sources and I have a couple loaded here. Um, and uh, I have, um, uh, I had also some snowflake data. With that scale, uh, what's great about at scale is that I can um, use virtualization to combine multiple data sources from multiple clouds if, if, if uh, desired um, and combine them into a single model. That's super powerful. Today, I'm going to be dealing with BigQuery because that's the title of this, of this webinar. So what I've just done is I just pulled onto my Canvas sales log. I'm going to double click it and that's going to bring up our um, our mode that we call our data set composer. So what you see here is you see some preview of, of some data and then you see a lot of different options for how I can transform that data. Um, so I can, for example, I can say I got these, um, um, I got my sales reasons, which are nulls. I can go ahead and say, uh, for example, let's transform those and let's replace anything uh, that has a null with a, um, unknown. Um, and just like that, 
Um, I can go ahead and preview that change and you can see now I've done a transformation. So now my sales reasons, reasons has been cleaned up. So I was able to do that without having to actually create any ETL code. This is all done virtually. What if I wanted to add a new calculation? Let's add a new calculation, let's call it sales tax. Well, with that scale, all I need to do is take my, is write a formula right here in my formula editor. Um, and I can test it and, and the like. I could save it. That formula will now appear as my, in my data set as a calculation. So there's my sales tax as a new column in my data set. So let's go back to my main canvas. And you can see now I have sales tax as a new calculated column. So I didn't have to create any ETL or create any, any physical representation of that. I can go ahead and I can pull in sales tax and sales tax at scale will create a column out of that or a measure. It'll choose its aggregation type and I'm gonna actually gonna choose which folder it goes into. Let's do order quantity as, as well. We wanna know how many, or, how many items per order were in my uh, basket. Let's figure out what our sales amount was so we can see what our order size was worth per order. And now I've just done three measures. So I put them all in the sales metrics, order quantity, sales amount, and sales tax. Rather than trying to like deal with this, uh, this, this structure here. Okay, so what about some dimensions? It's not very interesting if I can't sort and do uh, pivots by certain dimensions and attributes. So let's go and I'm gonna come to my, use our, our at scale library, and I'm gonna define or pull in a customer dimension. I'm gonna pull in a product dimension, and I'm gonna pull in a date dimension. So what's great about at scale is that semantic layer um, is a multi-dimensional semantic layer. So now you see I have um, some pretty rich um, uh, dimensions here. These were defined in other virtual cubes and now I'm using them and I'm gonna attach them to this new data set. So um, watch what happens when I connect up my customer dimension to my sales log table. Here's customer key. I'm just gonna connect it up. That creates a relationship in at scale. And then let's go see what it did. Well, it actually added a lot of different attributes here and it actually added a couple of hierarchies. There's my geography dimension or hierarchy and I also have a geography by zip code hierarchy. So how would that happen when it's such a simple little box here? Well, if I double click on customer dimension, what you could see is that it itself is another model um, and it's a model uh, that contains um, a geography dimension and a gender dimension. So it's its own model. And if I double click on my geography dimension, there you see it itself is its own model made up of multiple tables. So with Excel, at, with, um, with at scale, what's great about Design Center is that I can encapsulate some pretty complex relationships, but make it very easy to use to attach to new data sets. So let's go ahead and let's continue to do product and connect that up. Um, now I got a really rich date dimension here with retail 445, all these date dimensions I can roll up any way I want. Um, and with at scale, with time intelligence, we make doing moving averages, uh, year over year comparisons with, with uh, time periods that are different uh, year for each year, like, um, uh, like holiday seasons. That's all comes for free with at scale. So I can take my order date key. If I click put in order here, that creates a, what we call a role playing dimension. So now what you see is now you see date attributes. And now you see that the order date has actually, um, hierarchy has actually um, um, inherited that roll up I just dropped it on. I could do the same thing with ship date. So let's do that. I'll give that a role play key of ship. And now what you'll see is in my date dimensions, now I got ship dates. Okay, so it's things are looking pretty good. Uh, let's go back to my, uh, my Wrangler view here. Um, okay, well, this, unfortunately that sample is all showing nulls, but trust me that the product info is a set of key value pairs. So I'm gonna go to uh, back to my main canvas view and go to that product info field. 
And I'm going to show you how I can take a key value pair like, uh, like product info for color and style and create virtual columns out of those. And now I can create dimensions out of them just by dragging them into my dimension panel. So now I have color and style, which are actually in a nested field um, in my Google BigQuery table. And I've now made those queryable without having to do any kind of scary SQL to unnest them. Okay, so I think um, I'm gonna do one other thing. So in Excel today, I'm gonna show you how we can do drill through. Um, so I can drill through to details. And that's a really powerful thing to do. So for at scale, we can do that by default, and, but you can also define your own drill through paths. And so I'm gonna create one called customer details. And so I wanna know which customer is like, I wanna know the details of each order. So I can go to my customer attributes dimension here. And for example, I can say, give me the customer name, give me the country they're from, the state and the city. Let's also give them, um, give me the zip code um, and let's figure out what they bought. So I wanna know what the order quantity was and the sales amount. So, uh, so, so now customer details exist and I'll come back to that in a little bit. Okay. So what are we gonna to do to make this uh, available? We're gonna publish it. So publishing a virtual cube in at scale, there's no building it. All we did was we created a new uh, pr a project with Excel demo in it. So that's our new virtual cube that we just created. So let's go and explore that. Um, I'm gonna start with, Ex with Tableau only because I wanna show you what it looks like in Tableau but also the fact that Excel and Tableau, you can see how that single semantic layer really pays off. So I'm logging in in a live connection to AtScale with Tableau right now. And what I'm gonna see is I'm gonna see that metadata that I just saw in my preview, what you saw in Design Center. So there's my semantic layer. Remember my folders here for sales metrics, order quantity, sales amount, and then here's, my, um, here's all my dimensions nicely organized. So let's start with order quantity. That was a live connection. So just to, just to, just to make, make sure everybody knows this, I'm gonna go to my data sources tab and you can see that we're doing a, a live connection, not a Tableau extract. That means as data gets updated in BigQuery, you don't have to worry about updating your extracts. It's gonna show up live. Uh, let's go and let's look at uh, my products. I got a product hierarchy, product line, category, and name. So usually what people might do is start with the product line and then maybe they might drill down from a product line to a product, uh, to, the, to the product category. And from product category, they may choose a certain product category. Let's choose this one, for example. And they may then, then go ahead and then drill down to the, 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 product, uh, the products in that category. So that's all true drill down. Uh, with that scale, all very natural. Um, there's that color dimension. Remember the color dimension was my uh, key value pairs. So, uh, so there you go, I've unnested it without having to write any queries or any SQL in BigQuery. So let's move to, let's move to my Windows environment. Um, in my Windows environment, uh, let me just copy this connection string, I'm gonna fire up Excel. So now what I'm gonna do in Excel is I'm gonna spend really the rest of my demo time here. So let's open up a blank workbook to start. Okay, so um, I have a pretty late recent version of Excel here. Um, so how am I gonna get data and get data live with that scale? Well, I just go to that data tab. In that data tab, I can get external data. With the external data, I can get, get it from a number of other sources. Well, we've done a great thing in terms of, we look just like a SQL Server analysis services to, to anybody who speaks MDX. And that really pays dividends because those 750 million users of Excel can all talk to at scale without any client side software. So nobody needs to install anything you can, 750 million people can do what I'm about to do. So all they need is a connection string. And of course they need the ability to, um, 
to have uh, credentials to log into my virtual queue. So those 750 million users might get stuck there. Okay, so here's here's what we see. We see my internet sales cube BigQuery. That's the original cube that I showed you to start with. And then there's my Excel demo cube, which is the one I just authored. Um, and now what you see here is that you can actually, I'm gonna name this connection. So I'm creating a connection to AdScale. Um, I'm gonna call it BigQuery. And you're gonna see where that comes in later on. So it's a user-friendly name. And now I'm gonna finish. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a pivot chart. So I'm also going to show you a pivot table report, but let's just start there. Okay, so what do we got so far? There we have my semantic layer that you saw in Tableau, but this time you're seeing it in Excel and you're seeing it uh, live in Excel. So I can do, for example, that order quantity query that you saw me do in Tableau and do it by color. Okay, so now what, let's go back and, and, and put these side by side. Obviously, what you see is what you get. Same numbers, same results, different tools. So, and, and so gone are the days when people are using different BI tools or different presentations and getting different answers because they defined those metrics in, in a different way or they actually just created the report um, and the model in a different way. So let's go ahead and add another sheet and let me show you another thing we can do. So I'm gonna go back to that data. And this time, since I've already got the connection, I can use the existing connections. And there's my BigQuery connection. So I can come back and say, this time I'm gonna do a pivot table report. So what does that look like? My same familiar interface with my data. Um, but this time I can just, um, if I go and I'll see the actual data, not in a chart, but in, a, but in, a, but in cells. So what do we got here? Well, what we got here is we got a pivot chart and pivot table, and you can see that there's numbers here and uh, labels. Um, keep that thought. Um, I'm gonna show you how I can turn these into cells um, that work within um, uh, your own forecasting model in a second. But look what I could do in a pivot table. I can actually write mouse button on that. And you remember we, we, we actually created an ad scale. We created customer details. Well, now I can say, if I go, actually, I didn't want to do that. If I want to know where everybody, everybody who bought a blue product, I can go ahead and do that right here in Excel. And because we haven't moved the data, because we haven't pre-summarized the data, I can actually get all the way down to the row level um, without, having to do, without having to go back and ask anybody to run anything special for me or a special query. That's because we have not pre-aggregated the data. We can always drill all the way through to the atomic detail when necessary. That's the ultimate power. And that's the, the way you avoid any kind of, of compromises of, for performance. People normally will have to create aggregate tables that will lose this kind of detail and, and atomic uh, power. Okay, let's go and let's do um, another sheet. And let's come back and let's get some more data. Um, and this time, Let's see what we can do with this data um, when it comes to interactivity. So let's go and let's take um, my order quantity, my sales amount. Uh, let's go and let's look at my product hierarchy that you saw in Tableau. And let's just click on that. And what you're going to see over here is that now I have uh, my table that is by, in this case, that's product line. So let's drill down on my, on my product line. You can drill down on my product line by double clicking. That's automatically gonna do another query to uh, at scale. And then what you see there is now you see my, my product categories. And if I do it one more time, uh, you're gonna see uh, my, product, my products themselves. So in that case, I was doing a double click in which it replaced it. If I actually clicked on the, the little um, uh, plus sign there, it would have actually showed me um, how I could have done, um, how I could have expanded it and showed me the path. So uh, what you see in the pivot table is you see the raw numbers and you see the labels. But there's a little trick you can do in, in, in uh, Excel, which is super powerful. This is something you can't do in Sheets, um, in Google Sheets. 
So let's look at this and you can see that they have this um, in the analysis menu under the OLAP tools, you have the convert to formulas. So let's go ahead and do that, let's see what happens. I don't know if you noticed, but you can see that it just ran a, it just ran a query there. So what it actually did is it, it actually converted these into cube values and cube members. So uh, this is where it gets interesting. So uh, what I've just done here is what I can do in Excel, and I don't need to do that, I can do it just as an Excel formula, is I can actually create a formula with a tuple, a tuple meaning an intersection of data of, in this case, it's an intersection of my product lines um, with my, um, my sales amount. And I could do that by creating a cube value. So let's just go ahead and let's just, just let's do that. Let's go um, and create a cube value by saying, equal cube. Now you can see there's a bunch of different cube uh, functions here. I'm gonna look at cube value to pull back a cell from the at scale or, or the at scale virtual cube, which is pointing to BigQuery. So let's do cube value and then let's let um, Excel help us. Well, first of all, it knows that there's that BigQuery cube. That's where that label comes from. So I can just pick it and I'm gonna put a comma because that's my data source. And now I'm gonna start picking my metadata. So I'm gonna start with my measures and this is all at scale met metadata. Um, and I'm gonna choose, let's choose the sales amount. Okay, now what else do I want? Well, I want it to be by, let's do, uh, do it by a dimension. Let's do it by color. And by the cuts of color dimension and the color hierarchy. And well, let's start with the all member. That will give us all colors. So there's my formula for cube value. And you can see it's getting the data, and there's the there's the cell. So now I can put that cell anywhere I want. Um, it's independent, and I can surround it with other model and other calculations uh, to, to, to drive a, a very complex model. So um, Oh, let's just let's just do this and let's say for example oh sorry about that bad habit of using not using control c but using command c so let's go ahead and copy that and let's change this cell to everything that is blue um and that's now i got my blue um and my blue my uh my blue data so there you go so if i want to create a ratio of blue to total, I can simply do this in, in Excel, divide my uh, blues by my totals and turn that into a um, percent and voila, um, I just uh, have done a Excel calculation with data coming from at scale. Uh, so that's really, that's really, you can imagine, gets to be pretty powerful. Now, how does that get updated once I have this sheet? Well, all I need to do is just do data refresh. I'll refresh all. And what that does, you can see is that it will, re it will actually get that data um, and refresh it uh, so you always have the latest data. So that was really fast. So let's go back and see where all, how all this magic ha happened on the design center side. So you can see how we, we did this. So let's go back to design center and I'm gonna go to my query screen. And this is just a log of all the queries we've been running. Uh, and you can see that we've been running, um, the, you can see these Excel demos, and these are the queries. And you can see that we started all the way back in Tableau. Um, actually, that was, a, that was uh, still the MBX. Let's see if I can find the Tableau one here. Um, that also is one. So let's get, so uh, anyway, so, um, uh, my Tableau query is in here someplace, but let's just go to our last query. So what you see here is you can see that um, in Excel, Excel sent us this MDX statement. Um, so it was looking for color blue by our, our, our sales amount. And of course we generated a query against BigQuery and we used an aggregate table. So at scale got busy and actually in the time that I actually published that, that Excel demo virtual cube, at scale created aggregations. Um, in this case, an eight row aggregation 
and use that aggregation to satisfy that Excel query. That was really the key for why things were so fast. Because look at how fast these queries are. You can see that it says cache and ags. Ags means we reference an aggregate table that we created in BigQuery. Cache means that we actually pin that, that, that ag in memory. So that's how we can get 182 milliseconds. You can see that this one query was, uh, was um, eight or nine milliseconds. So that's how you can get and build a very complex model in Excel, but be able to refresh it and refresh it in a reasonable time frame. Because at scale is doing all this OLAP for you, but without all the baggage of traditional OLAP, where you have to pre-calculate and choose what's worthy. And we're doing all that on BigQuery natively, using BigQuery natively. And we're saving you a ton of money on BigQuery because we're now making these queries small and fast, and we're making them access drastically smaller amounts of data. Um, so you're gonna save on those BigQuery costs and get, get your, your uh, query speeds on BigQuery, and by the way, without having to move it or do any ETL. So let's go ahead and let's bring it all home here. Um, and, uh, and, and just review what's, what, 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 we, what, what we just did here. Well, what you saw is that you saw that we, we delivered sub-second queries, and we did that with multiple BI tools. We could have done also Power BI uh, for you Microsoft shops, um, or, or any BI tool that speaks SQL or MDX. You saw that universal semantic layer. You saw how our numbers and our metadata was consistent across multiple BI tools. Um, I didn't show you governance, that's for another webinar. And you saw what the power was of using uh, our hierarchies and our time relative features to be able to actually do true OLAP without writing complicated SQL. So that's the, the whirlwind tour of Excel on BigQuery. So I hope you enjoyed it um, and I'll send it back to you, Carol. Thanks, Dave. I'm not seeing any questions from um, our attendees today. Of course, uh, for our attendees, if you think of anything later, you can always email us at hi, hi, at atscale.com. Um, this concludes our webinar today. So thank you for joining us and look for your copy of the on-demand in your email box. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.